In this video, we shall discuss the chapter Capital Gain. Capital Gain is a very big chapter, so I am dividing the video into three parts. This is the first part of the video. In this video, I will be explaining what is capital gain, what are financial assets, what are not financial assets, what are the assets which will not be considered as capital asset at all, how to calculate long term capital gain and how to calculate short term capital gain. Only if you understand this theory, you will be able to work out problems. So in this video, I am explaining the theoretical concept of capital gain, which is very important for you to work out the problem. Now let's move on to this video. First, we should know what is the basis of charge under the head capital gain. The basis of charge under the head capital gain is transfer of asset. Transfer of asset means there should be a sale. The capital asset must be sold and that transfer, that transfer, that is that sale has to be have taken place in the previous year. In the previous year, if a capital asset is sold, then the loss or gain, when you are selling an asset, you may end up with the loss or you may end up with the gain. Whether it is a loss or gain, it will be taxed under the head capital gain. Okay, this is the basis of charge. Now, understanding capital asset, we should know the two types of capital asset. One is financial asset and the other is non-financial asset. So, we shall see what is financial asset. Financial asset is listed securities, listed shares, listed debentures, UTI units, mutual fund, zero coupon bond, government securities and unlisted shares. These are the list of financial asset. Then what is a non-financial asset? Anything other than the list. That is anything that I have listed here. Apart from that, other things will come under non-financial asset. Then there are certain assets which are not included as capital asset at all. There are certain assets which will not be treated as capital asset at all. The first one is stock and trade and raw material. The assessee, if he is using stock and trade, or the raw material in his business and if this stock and trade or raw material is sold then that sale is not capital asset. Okay, any stock and trade or raw material used by the SSE in his business or profession then that the sale of that stock and trade or raw material is not a capital asset. Okay, that sale the profit or gain from that sale will not be charged here. The next is asset held for personal use. For example, I have a furniture in my home, then that is not a capital asset because it is my personal use. These are assets which are held by the SSE for his personal use and that is not treated as capital asset. If I sell a furniture in my house, which is used in my house, then that is not a capital asset. For this personal use, asset used by the SSE for his personal purpose, there are certain exception. Exception means certain asset even though if they are used by the SSE for his personal use, it will be treated as capital asset. What are those assets? The first one is jewellery. Jewellery include ornaments also which is two severance. I sell it even though if it is a personal asset, the sale will be treated as capital asset. Then any work of art. Art means Example painting, if I have a costly painting, I sell it and in that transaction I get a gain or loss. Then even though if it is used at my home, I have the piece of art in my home, that will be treated as capital asset. Then archaeological collections. So all these three that is jewellery, any piece of art, archaeological collection. These assets even though if they are personal asset they will be treated as capital asset. Okay, the sale will be charged in under the head capital gain. The next one is agricultural land in India, 6.5% gold bond, 7% gold bond, national defense bond, special bearer bond, gold deposit bond under gold monetization scheme 2015. So, these are all certain assets. These assets the sale of these assets will not be treated under capital gain. They are not capital assets at all. 
Are you clear? Okay. Now, why are we distinguishing between financial asset and non-financial asset is we have to classify them into types of assets. The types of capital assets are short term capital asset and long term capital asset. Short term and long term. How do we classify an asset as a short term or long term is based on the period of holding. Based on the period of holding the asset we are going to classify it into either short term asset or long term. So, period of holding is nothing but from the date of purchase till the date of sale. That is called as period of holding. Say, I am buying an asset in the year 2012 and I am selling it in 2022. So, what is the period of holding? Period of holding is 10 years. So, based on this period of holding, we are going to classify an asset into short term asset and long term asset. First, see, first let us see what is a short term asset. If a financial asset, so this is why I say why financial asset, classification of financial asset and non-financial asset is very important. For financial asset, the period of holding is different and for non-financial asset, the period of holding is different. Okay. If it is a financial asset, if it is a share or a debenture or a mutual fund and if the asset is sold within 12 month period, from the date of purchase, if you sell the asset within a period of 12 months, then it is called as a short term capital asset. In this financial asset list, I have one thing that is unlisted shares. Unlisted shares comes under financial asset. But for unlisted shares, the period of holding is 24 months. That is, I buy an unlisted shares. And I sell it within a period of 24 months, not 12 months. Other than unlisted shares, all the other financial assets, if it is sold within a period of 12 months, it is short term. For unlisted shares, it is sold within a period of 24 months, then it is called as short term. For non-financial asset, if the asset is a non-financial asset, and if it is sold within 36 months from the date of purchase, then it is a short term asset. For other financial asset also, we have a separate category. If it is a house property, if you sell a house property within a period of 24 months from the date of purchase, then that is a short term capital asset. So we are classifying as an asset into short term based on the period of holding. For financial asset, if the asset is held for less than 12 months, if it is unlisted shares, less than 24 months. Non-financial asset, less than 36 months. If it is a house property, less than 24 months, then that asset is called as a short-term capital asset. Okay. And one more thing that you should know under short-term capital asset is an asset which is used for business or profession. If the associate is using an asset for his business or for his prof profession and for which he charges depreciation, he is charging depreciation under return down value method, then that asset is always treated as short term capital asset. That is, if an associate is using an asset for his business or profession and he is charging depreciation on that asset, then that asset cannot be called as long term. It is always a short term capital asset. Clear? Now moving on to long term capital asset. Long term capital asset is again a financial asset which is held for more than 12 months. If the asset is sold after 12 months from the date of purchase, it is a long term capital asset. For unlisted shares, more than 24 months. For non-financial asset, more than 36 months. If it is a house property, more than 24 months. Then that is called as long term capital asset. Clear? Okay, these are the different types of asset. Only if you understand this classification, first you should know to classify an asset whether it is a short term or long term. After classifying the asset into short term and long term, then we can move on to the comparison. How to compute 
capital gain. The computation of capital gain for short term capital gain is different and for long term it is different. First we shall see how to compute capital gain for short term. Short term asset. So for a short term asset we have to start our answer with sale consideration. Sale consideration is nothing but the selling price of the asset. Take the selling price, write it in the amount column. If there are any expenses on sale, expenses on sale may be, for example, it may be brokerage. If there is any brokerage, then like brokerage, if there is any other expenses, we can deduct that amount and this answer is called as net sale consideration. So from the selling price, we are going to deduct any expense on sale. The answer that you get is net sale consideration. From the net sale consideration, we have to deduct cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition is nothing but purchase price. Whatever price at which the assessee has purchased the asset. That is the cost of acquisition. With the cost of acquisition, if any cost of improvement has been made, if the assessee has spent any amount on the asset, for improving it then that is cost of improvement any amount which is spent on the asset add these two items bring it to the outer column deduct it from the net sale consideration if the answer is positive you will get short term capital gain if the answer is negative you will get short term capital loss so this is very simple from the selling price we are going to deduct any expense on sale so we will arrive at the net sale consideration. From the net sale consideration, we have to deduct cost of purchase. That is cost of acquisition, cost of improvement. The resultant answer, if the answer is positive, we will get short term capital gain. If the answer is negative, we will get short term capital loss. Okay. And short term capital gain for depreciable asset. I told you in the previous slide itself, if the assessee is using an asset, and he is charging depreciation on written down value method, then that asset is always treated as short term capital asset. So for that kind of depreciable asset, how are we going to calculate? Till net sale consideration, the format is same. From the selling price, we are going to deduct expense on sale. The answer that you get is net sale consideration. From the net sale consideration, we are going to deduct the written down value as on 1st April. Since we are charging depreciation on the asset, Every year beginning, we will find out the return down value. So whatever is the return down value on the day on the year of sale, that return down value, if you deduct it, if your answer is positive, you will arrive at short term capital gain. If your answer is negative, you will arrive at short term capital loss. So that's all with short term capital gain. Now moving on to long term capital gain. For long term capital gain, Till net sale consideration the same process from the selling price deduct expenses on sale you will arrive at the net sale consideration. From this you have to deduct index cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement. Then you will arrive at a positive value or a negative value if it is positive it is long term gain. The difference is we have to deduct index cost of acquisition and index cost of improvement. How to calculate this index cost of acquisition? Before seeing how to calculate index cost of acquisition, there are certain exceptions. For some assets, we will not calculate index cost. What are the exceptions? For bonds and debentures, equity shares, equity oriented fund or unit of a business trust. For all these things, we need not calculate index cost. There is no need for indexing. Another thing is cost of improvement. I have given you index cost of improvement. For this also there is an exception. If the cost of improvement is made before 1-4-2001. This date is very important. 1-4-2001 is an important date. If you incur a cost of improvement before this date, it shall not be deducted. You, you, you cannot deduct that cost of improvement. If the cost of improvement has been made after 1-4-2001 only, you can claim it. Otherwise, you cannot claim it. Okay. 
Now with this we shall see how to calculate the indexing value. If the asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, as I told you 1-4-2001 is an important date for calculating index cost. If the asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, you have to take the cost of acquisition. I told you acquisition is nothing but purchase price. You have to take the purchase price or FMV is fair market value. This value will be given in the question. The fair market value as on 1-4-2001. This will be given in the question. You take both the values. You take the cost of purchase and also fair market value as on 1-4-2001. Whichever is high you will consider. Cost of acquisition or fair market value as on 1-4-2001. Whichever is higher take that value. That value multiplied by CII. CII stands for cost inflation index. This also will be given in the question. Cost inflation index for the year of sale divided by CII as on 1-4-2001. So this is the formula for calculating index cost of acquisition if the asset is purchased before 1-4-2001. So if the asset is purchased after 1-4-2001, you will take cost of acquisition that is the purchase price. Purchase price into CII for the year of sale divided by CII for the year of purchase. So this is very simple. You don't have to compare anything. If the asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, you will take the fair market value, compare it with the purchase price, whichever is high into CII for year of sale divided by CII as on 1-4-2001. If the asset is purchased after 1-4-2001, cost of acquisition into CII for year of sale divided by year of purchase. So this is how we have to calculate capital gain if it is a short term asset or a long term asset. Only if you understand this, you will be able to work out the problems. So I hope you found this video useful. For problems, you watch the part 2 video where I have explained problems under the head capital gains. Thank you for watching.